Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelly, I am a physical therapist and I specialize in cancer rehab and lymphedema. There are a lot of different claims and controversies out there on the internet as well as from healthcare providers about lymphedema and breast cancer surgery. I have created another video on this topic, but we're gonna go through in this video another three questions or myths related to lymphedema and breast cancer surgery. And we're gonna talk about what is true and what is not. Like I mentioned, this is a video in a series of videos on this topic, and so if you wanna see the other video, be sure to subscribe down below. And you can also follow along with us on Instagram for more related content on cancer rehab and lymphedema. And lastly, if you have any other questions or myths that you wanna hear more about in relation to lymphedema and breast cancer, be sure to comment those down below. So the first question or myth is, does flying increase the risk or cause lymphedema after lymph node removal or surgery? Just like in the last video, I'm gonna dive head straight into one of the more controversial topics here. There is no literature to prove that there is a correlation between the two. There are some anecdotal reports out there that say that some people have had an increase in lymphedema or have caused lymphedema after flying, but the research is showing that there is no correlation between flying and lymphedema risk. One study concluded that air travel is not associated with upper limb lymphedema after breast cancer surgery. And another study out there evaluated changes in arm volume after short and long distance flights and found that there was no change in the arm volume measurements after flying. So the thought process behind why there are anecdotal reports saying that lymphedema is caused by flying is that there is some sort of other causation to why someone had a flare up or a cause of lymphedema after they flew, meaning that something else exacerbated this around the same time. However, because this is still controversy, there are some circumstances that individuals will wear compression sleeves to be ultra conservative. Until there are more solidifying studies, supporting individuals who want to wear a compression sleeve while flying to be conservative is reasonable for peace of mind. Now, what about someone who already has lymphedema or has some sort of lymphatic malfunction? There are articles written to talk about that flying can increase someone's swelling if they already have that dysfunction of the lymphatics. A couple different thoughts on reasons for this is that there is an increased risk of cabin pressure, which can exacerbate lymphatic dysfunction. And another one out there is that when you are flying for long periods of time, you're not moving. And we know that the muscles do help the lymphatics pump and so that the fluid is more stagnant, which can cause a backup in the system as well. So overall, it is recommended for someone to wear their compression sleeve or compression garment or bandaging while flying if they already do have lymphedema or lymphatic dysfunction to help make sure that they're keeping their symptoms and their volumes at bay. So the next statement or myth is two part. It is, does lymphatic drainage or wearing a compression garment or sleeve reduce someone's risk of developing lymphedema after surgery? There are mixed study results on these statements. It does lean a little bit more in the direction that lymphatic drainage after surgery with lymph nodes removed, such as an axillary dissection, does not decrease someone's risk of developing lymphedema. A study was done to see if adding lymphatic drainage to a program consisting of the typical treatment like exercises and stretching and scar massage improved any outcomes of reduced risk of lymphedema. It showed that lymphatic drainage did not provide any additional benefit when added to those typical treatments. Along with this study and other research, new breast cancer related lymphedema guidelines suggest the exact same, that lymphatic drainage does not provide an added benefit for reducing someone's risk of developing lymphedema. And when it comes to wearing a compression sleeve, there is a little bit more support to say that there is a benefit of wearing a compression sleeve after surgery to lower someone's risk of developing lymphedema. These are not major studies. Again, it is just leaning a little bit more towards support. 
There was one study that looked at women who had an axillary lymph node dissection, and they had one group that wore a basic compression sleeve and compared it to a group that did not wear any compression. They had both groups do some sort of upper extremity exercise routine and deep breathing for 15 minutes a day. Both of those, which I talk a lot about on this channel. And when looking at this group one year later, there was a lower incidence of lymphedema in the group that did wear the compression. And so it may suggest that there is that benefit of the compression overall. A basic compression sleeve would be ones like these. This one is from Juzo. This one is from Medi. It is the Harmony. And they are lighter in compression overall. So they're not meant for someone who has full-blown lymphedema. But again, they're with someone who is at a risk or might have just mild early signs of lymphedema. We get someone a basic compression sleeve. They wear it for three or four weeks. And then we reassess and decide where to go from there. These can be found online or through other vendors. And I will put some links down below that someone can check out further. In the end, every person adds his, her, or their own need, and it's always best to make sure that you check with a lymphedema therapist first before deciding what route to go, because a lymphedema therapist is going to look at multiple factors, which may increase someone's risk, such as, you know, how many lymph nodes they removed, if they had radiation, obesity, and other genetic factors as well. And the last statement or myth that we're going to talk about in this video today is, does losing weight decrease someone's risk of developing lymphedema? Now, this one is true. There are studies that show that there is a correlation between weight or BMI and lymphedema. Studies show that if someone has a BMI of greater or equal to 30, that they are at a higher risk of developing lymphedema. It's thought that the excess adipose or fatty tissue can block the pathways and can also put pressure on the superficial lymphatics, which can damage them and cause more backup of the swelling. So by lowering a weight into a healthier range, someone can reduce the risk of developing lymphedema. And likewise, if someone already has lymphedema or lymphatic dysfunction, losing weight can reduce the amount of volume or the severity of someone's lymphedema. We do see this anecdotally in the clinic really often. So if someone loses even five pounds or 10 pounds, there is a significant reduction in their volumes of their lymphedema. Yes, likely due to weight loss, but also improved swelling, improved tissue and skin with less fibrosis and less pitting. And overall, this helps improve function and mobility and reduce the risk of infection. Like we've talked about, there are a lot of different recommendations out there that says this does reduce your risk of developing lymphedema, but when it comes to losing weight and obesity, there is proof and support in the research to say that yes, this one is true, this is what we want to recommend and encourage. And so those are the three statements and myths that we're talking about today. Again, if you want to see the other videos related to this, be sure to subscribe down below. And if you have any other topics that you want to hear about or myths that you want to hear about in relation to lymphedema and breast cancer surgery, be sure to comment those down below. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you all next week for another video. Thanks everyone.